how didn't I know Apple was struggling? I literally had no idea because the changes that they've made with all these new system updates are moves you make when your back is against the wall. They've literally come out swinging. So let me officially reintroduce you to your iPad because everything is different now. iPad OS 26 is definitely one of the biggest updates yet. And from the moment that your download is complete, I can guarantee you it feels like you have a brand new iPad. And while that is exciting, it can be a little bit overwhelming. So let's walk through everything you need to know because the way you're used to using your iPad has drastically changed. Let's get into it. Now, when you install the update, you'll have a prompt to pick the multitasking feature you want. Your options are full screen app, which is the old way, or full screen and windowing apps, which is the new windowing multitasking system. And trust me, you want the windowing option. The multitasking features is one of the main reasons we're all here. The best part of this new windowing feature is that it's coming to all iPads that can run iPad OS 26, but we'll get into that more later on. Now, if you didn't select this option at the prompt, no worries. You can always go into settings, multitasking gestures, and select the windowing option from here. All right, starting at the beginning with the elevation of the lock screen. Now, when you long hold on the lock screen and tap the plus icon, this will take you to the wallpaper menu and there are five new wallpaper options here you have dynamic shadow sky halo and dusk the dynamic wallpaper cycles through all five styles and if you want to use any of the wallpapers from this menu just select the wallpaper and use the add button at the top right to save it and if you want to change the photo on your lock screen that whole process is now quick and easy just hold down on the lock screen and then select customize use this little photo square icon to select the picture that you want to use from your photo library now when you have your lock screen set, everything adapts to the photo. Now if the photo on your wallpaper supports it, there'll be a new spatial icon that creates a 3D effect on your lock screen. And once you've applied the 3D effect, the clock time will now layer behind your photo. And the way it blends behind your photo, chef's kiss. So one feature that everyone is excited about is the clock resizing feature, but this only works with the default font. Once you've selected the font, just hold on the bottom right corner and you can drag it bigger or smaller. And I know some of us like to customize the clock, but don't worry, even using this default font, you still have a few customization options here. You can change the color and the thickness of the font, and you can also choose between a glassy and a solid look. Both of these look really nice, but the glassy look blends into your wallpaper more. Now, if you want the time to overlap your photo, just drag the resizing box all the way down and it'll bring your clock forward. The clock on your lock screen will also dynamically resize depending on any notifications that you receive on your iPad. All right, moving on to the home screen, which is now a customization dream. Everything is so easy to customize with this new update. To get to the customization options, just long hold on your home screen, select edit and customize. As far as customizations, we have a few more options. Now you have your default, dark, clear, and tenant. Now the clear icon thing basically blends your apps into your wallpaper. Everything is transparent, all of your apps and your widgets. So it really makes my dark mode sticker stand out as you can see. But you can also use the tint to add color to your app icons and this is a different look than what we got last year. This feature now doesn't have that black background so you can really see the color tint to your icons and widgets. You can also set how much or how little color that you want to show on your icons or widgets. But if you like that black look that we had before, it's still there just use the dark option down at the bottom. You can also set the customizations to auto and it'll adjust depending on the time of day. And if you're someone who doesn't manually want to tweak your colors, you can use the Apple intelligence icon and it'll suggest a look for you. And now let me show you how much quicker it is to change the background on your home screen. When you hold on your home screen and select edit, there's now an option here for you to customize your wallpaper. Select edit wallpaper and you'll be taken to the menu where you can choose color, gradient, or select the photo that you want to use for your background. Once you have your background, select done to save it. All right, so that's it for the new liquid glass display. Now let's get back into this windowing feature, which is another main attraction for this iOS update. You can still use your full screen apps and swipe home to switch between the apps. Stage Manager is still available on compatible devices if you like that grouping feature, but now we all have access to the new windowing feature, which allows you to resize, overlap and move windows around like you can on a MacBook. Now the iPad really does have a Mac feel to it, but it still keeps that touch control of an iPad. When you first select an app, it will open in full screen. And from the bottom right, there's a drag handle that you can use to resize or towel your apps. And now you can freely resize and move your windows anywhere. The easiest way that I've found to move your windows is to hold in the middle towards the top of the window and you can move it that way. Now, 
I've tried to move it with the corners and with the drag option. It seems like that does more resizing than actually moving the window around. But if it works for you, it works for you. Another thing that I've noticed too is that the windows really don't move when you use your Apple Pencil. This is more of a hands-on feature when you're trying to move and resize your apps. Or you can use a mouse and a trackpad if you're a keyboard user. And we also got a few new hand gestures too. So if you flick the window up, it will open your app full screen. And if you flick it down, it'll minimize it. I've heard some talk about the slide over feature being removed with this update and people are upset about that but while that is true you still have access to the split screen feature it's just been placed inside of this new windowing feature for you to use now if you want to add apps to the right or left of your screen with the windowing feature you can use the flick gesture to tile the windows just open the app you want to use hold the title bar and kind of I like to circle around and then just flick the window to the right or the left of the screen the app will snap into place and the home screen will appear on the other side. Now just select the second app that you want to open and fill in the remaining space. And if you hold in the middle of the screen on both of the apps, you'll get that split view slider that we're used to using. The added bonus of this windowing feature is now you're not restricted to these two apps. You can open additional apps on top of them, taking your multitasking and productivity to another level. All right, so we have the windows down. Now let's get into the menu bar and the stoplight controls. If you have a Mac, you're already used to this. But when I first got my Mac, all of this took some getting used to, especially coming from a Windows computer. Anytime you need to access the floating menu bar, just swipe down from the top of the screen. The menu bar is there and you'll find things like file and edit your typical menu bar functions or shortcuts depending on the app that you're currently using. And to get to the stoplight controls on your full screen, they'll be at the left of your menu bar. Otherwise, they're gonna be in the top left corner of your window. Just hover over them to make them bigger and accessible. Now let's talk about what the controls do. The green is your return to full screen, your yellow minimizes the app, and your red closes out the app. And if you long press on any of the stoplight controls, you'll get a few tiling options, including side by side, top and bottom, four corners, and three column view. And the split view slider will still be there for your multi-column views. Now this is something different. Your iPad is gonna remember where the app was and the size of the app if you need to close it or you need to reboot your iPad. Once you open the app, it's gonna come right back like you never left. So now that we have this multitasking feature, you have a lot of windows open and you're multitasking, right? If you need to change the apps that you're currently working on or you wanna close some of the apps out, just swipe up on your screen and you can see all of the windows that you currently have open. The windowing apps are grouped together in this view. They're calling this expose mode. From here, you can quickly switch between the windows that you're currently using, or you can swipe up and close any of the windows that you're done using. And don't forget that you can use that red control to close them out individually. Now for my iPad and keyboard users, this new windowing feature is really gonna give you a Mac type of experience. And the biggest change with using a keyboard is you have a real cursor now and not not that weird circle. I'm sorry, Apple, but it was weird. So if you're using a keyboard to access the menu bar with your mouse or your trackpad, just hover over the top of the screen and it'll pop up. The files app has next. And we got a few features here that I'm excited about. Y'all, we have a real toolbar with menus like file, edit, view, just like the finder on your Mac. In the list view, you can resize the columns and you can also customize your folders and files. If you wanna customize your folder, just hold on the folder and in the drop down menu, select customize and tags. Here you can choose an icon from the list or you can add an emoji and when you select the tag option this is where you're going to change the file color another customization for the file app is that you can long hold on your document and select open with and now you can set the default app for the document or the folder which is going to be a time saver no more having to go through the menus to select where you want the file to open all right so now long hold on the folder again and at the bottom of this pop-up menu is your option to add to this is where you get the option to add the folder to your dock for quick access you can also long hold on the folder and drag it down to the dock. And if you're someone who uses a lot of files like me, this is the best update ever. No more having to filter through the files app to get to the folder that you use daily. We have three new apps that have joined the lineup. First up is the preview app. Now this app is already on the Mac. This app will let you scan documents and sign them, fill out forms, highlight and mark up PDFs and more using your Apple Pencil right in the app. You can also edit images in this app. You can crop them and rotate them and even remove backgrounds. This app also allows you to 
to export files in multiple formats. Next up, the journal app has come to the iPad and this app is perfect for capturing your thoughts and memories. And the best part is now you can add in handwritten entries using your Apple Pencil. This app is not just a text and go situation. You can add sketches, photos, videos, and audio recordings just to add a personal touch to your journaling experience. And lastly, the phone app has come to the iPad and not only can you make and receive calls, but you get the full functions of the app on your iPad. But there are a couple of steps that you need to take for this to work. You're gonna go into settings on your iPhone and search phone and turn on allow calls from other devices. Under allow calls on, toggle on your iPad. On your iPad, you're gonna open settings and FaceTime. Make sure calls from iPhone is toggled on. Now you can make and receive calls from your iPad. Now this is one feature that I have mixed feelings about. I don't know if I wanna make and receive calls. Usually I'm in deep focus mode or working on something. So that's definitely not anything I wanna do, but I can see how it would be beneficial if you use your iPad for like work and you work with a team. So you can quickly just call and access somebody from your iPad while you're working instead of having to find your phone or stop what you're doing and get your phone to make a call. So I can, I see both sides of it. I just don't know if this is a feature that I will be using on my iPad. Let, let me know, let me know if this is something that you're happy came to the iPad or it's an app that you can pass on. All right, shortcuts. This is an app that I recently started to do more with because I know that automating my workflow with shortcuts could save a lot of time. And this update has added Apple intelligence. So that means that you can use AI writing tools inside of your automations. You can generate images and even tap into chat GPT all from the shortcuts app. Imagine creating a shortcut that simplifies your workflow with one touch, like generating summaries of your notes or drafting emails automatically. You can decide where the task runs, whether its own device for your privacy or a private cloud computing for more power but still secure or even connect the tools like chat GPT for extra flexibility. So now for an example of how I see myself using shortcuts with this new feature. I have some notes that I want chat to help me with. Let's say that I have notes or a paper that I've written and I want chat GPT to help me with that. I have to have a separate window open in order to use chat. But now I can build a shortcut that takes my notes right from the notes app and sends them to ChatGPT to clean up or expand on them, then drops the final draft back into my notes automatically with one touch of a button. I mean, I need to lean more into this. Let me know in the comments if you are interested in some shortcut content because I'm definitely on my way down a rabbit hole. This update here is gonna change everything. For my fellow content creators, Apple did not forget about us. iPad OS 26 lets you choose the audio input by app. So if you're recording your podcast or streaming, you can easily switch between your iPad's mic, an external mic, or your AirPods. Because don't forget that feature came to AirPods too. And there's the local capture feature. Your iPad can now record separately high quality audio and video streaming during a call, your interviews or collaborations. No need for extra gear, no third party apps required. It's like a FaceTime call and you just hit record. That Game changed. Lastly, let's talk about the calculator app because this thing is not basic at all. Now you can solve multivariable equations right on your iPad. So if you're in college and you're taking algebra or calculus, this is the one. The calculator app now has you covered. It also supports 3D graphs. Just type in your equation and you'll get a full interactive graph that you can rotate and explore. I mean, this is one of those features that I'm probably not gonna use a lot, but someone out there needed this and is overly excited for it. And I love that for you. This means no need for an iPad and a separate graphing calculator. And those things are expensive. All right, y'all, that's all the features that have stood out to me so far, but I'm sure as I continue to use my iPad, I'll find more. This is probably the most transformation we've seen on the iPad in years. It has definitely established the iPad's identity for anyone thinking the iPad is just a big phone or a screen extension for the MacBook. Y'all let me know what your favorite features are so far and any tips that you may have. I also did a video on iOS 26 where I'm going over the new features and how to access them. So now we have the updates for the iPhone and the iPad covered. Let me know in the comments if you want a video for the Mac too. All right y'all, till next time.